Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and I'm currently outside the construction site entrance for the new Parramatta Light Rail maintenance facility. So this is part two of my current Parramatta Light Rail update series. It's early March 2022 and in this video I'm going to cover this maintenance facility and then the line from Camellia to Carlingford. In my last video I covered from Westmead Station to the James Roos Drive Bridge. So in this video I'm going to continue from the James Roos Drive Bridge to Carlingford. But before I do that, I'm going to cover the maintenance facility, starting from where I'm standing, which is just here on Cahoon Street. At this entrance, there are some porter cabins and a CAF ute. The trams on this line will be the CAF Urbus 3s, which are the same models that are used on the L1 Inner West light rail, and also in Newcastle and Canberra. Here are some further views from Cahoon Street. As you can see, it's still very much at the earthworks stage. This heritage high voltage building is on the corner of Grand Avenue and Cahoon Street and is outside the construction site. Now looking from Grand Avenue. This is after several days of very heavy rain, so lots of earthwork and drainage is required to make this site suitable for trams. The future tram tracks will go right through where this water currently is. In this video I will be covering the changes that have happened in the last three months, so do watch my earlier update video first. Link in the description and appearing on screen now. This was filmed on Saturday the 5th of March 2022. If you know what this is, please do share this in the comments below. Since I was last here, horizontal cantilevers for the overhead wires have appeared, along with the tram only signs. And looking the other way, you can see the red tram only warnings on the track bed. The cantilevers, tension cables and overhead wires have now been installed. This is how it looked three months earlier. So now at the James Roos Drive Bridge where I finished my part one update. I haven't heard any news on the results of the naming competition for this bridge, so it's still the James Roos Drive Bridge for now. This is taken from Grand Avenue North. From this side of the bridge, the line descends before making a sharp left for the Camellia stop. In part one, you saw the track laying on the western approach to this bridge. Track laying is also progressing on the James Roos Drive Bridge itself, with construction work taking place seven days a week to get this finished. If you look closely, you can see some people working on this bridge right now. This is how the track laying is looking on the eastern side. You can see the concrete wall and fence between the tracks and the active transport path. And here is a closer view of the tracks. You can see a small section of finished track towards the end of the descent and at the end of the bridge the tracks turn slightly right to join the lines that were completed last year. This is how it looked back in October before the track laying started on this bridge. Now let's take a look at the Camellia stop and the junction just before it. Trams will turn left to access the Camellia stop and the line to Carlingford and when out of service they will use this spur to access the lines to the maintenance facility. The Camellia stop is where these vehicles are. You can make out one of the platforms here. Not much has changed at this stop since my last video. Back in November last year, the overhead wire poles were in place, but not much else. Now you can see the horizontal poles that will carry the overhead wires. These are known as cantilevers. You can also see the tension cables that will keep these cantilevers horizontal. The Camellia stop is over on the right. The line to the maintenance facility has been completed with overhead wires for some time now. The yellow person sign is a warning for the overhead wires above. This is from Grand Avenue North. The active transport path is on the other side of the black fence. These two overhead wire poles are currently the last ones, although more will shortly be installed on the bridge to Tramway Avenue. It will be interesting to see if the same design of overhead wire equipment is used on this bridge or something different. This cycleway behind me is on what I believe was the old junction to the Sandown line. It seems to be open now, so I'm going to take a look. This took me one and a half minutes to walk, so I've speeded this up. I believe the purpose of this path is to provide a pedestrian link from the Camellia stop to the Rose Hill Racecourse. So rather than being a cycleway, it's more likely to be a footpath or shared path. When I saw these workmen on the left, I realised that this path probably isn't officially open. It's more likely that they forgot to close the fence when they came in. When they saw me filming on my iPhone, they realised that I wasn't lost and didn't seem to mind me being here. So you've seen this path before anyone else. 
Previously, this was the track bed for the junction that connected the Carlingford line to the Sandown line. The Rose Hill Racecourse is on the left and it looks like this will be as far as I can go. On the other side of this fence, the path continues a little further to the track bed of the old Carlingford line. So I'm now on the north side of the Parramatta River and thanks to the opening up of a little bit of the active transport path access track, I'm now able to get a much better view of the existing railway bridge with the active transport path alongside it. So this is the path that has opened up. So on the left is the existing railway bridge, complete with tram tracks and overhead wires. The active transport path bridge has been attached to the right. And this other bridge has a pipeline on it, which I believe carries water. Nothing has changed here except for better views. Here are some closer views of the new active transport path bridge. This will provide a much more pleasant and convenient way for pedestrians and cyclists to cross the Parramatta River, compared to crossing the river via the busy James Roos Drive. This is looking north from the same location. All looks complete here and it's been like this for a little while now. It's interesting how there is one cantilever on this side and two on the other side. If you know why this is, please do share this in the comments below. So I'm now at the Rydalmere stop and wow, this stop has changed so much since I was last here three months ago. So as you can see, all the tracks are in place along with the overhead wire poles and the two platforms look much more complete. Back in November last year, the platforms were still being built along with the track immediately north of this stop and the new car park on the left was nowhere to be seen. Now you can see the car park on the left. You can also see the crossing for the active transport path which switches from the west side of the tracks to the east side at this stop. Lots of landscaping has taken place, especially behind the platforms and between the active transport path and the light rail tracks. There will be six ways to access this stop and I'll reveal these now, starting with the ones on the west side. The first is via this footbridge that goes under Victoria Road and this leads to a new path which is coming into view now. This new path leads down to the platforms and also to the active transport path too. Here is another view of this path, now looking back towards the Victoria Road bridge. Next is via these steps from Victoria Road. This takes you to the path that I just showed you, or if you go to the right, it brings you out to this entrance here. Or you could walk down the old Victoria Road to access this same entrance. So that's three different access points from this side. From this entrance, you can see some bicycle hoops and some seats. These are part of the active transport path. The northbound platform is on the left side of these grass verges and can be accessed at various points such as here, here and here. Just south of this stop, you can see the new Vineyard Creek Bridge that carries the tracks and the active transport path. Also notice the 70k speed limit sign. Access to the southbound platform is via this crossing. This is also where the active transport path crosses the tracks. Here is another view of this crossing. Notice the black fences to slow down cyclists and the step-free ramps at the end of the platforms. On the east side, there are also three ways to access this stop, all from Brodie Street. The first is this entrance here. This is the closest to the Victoria Road Bridge and is where the active transport path changes sides. There are also bicycle hoops on this side and a grass verge that separates the car park behind. The next way is via this pedestrian crossing which leads into the car park. The platform is behind this green verge with access at either side. A little further down Brodie Street is the last entrance on this side. This path is at the south end of this stop. From here you can cross the tracks to access the northbound platform or access the southbound platform and car park from this side. I feel that they have done a fantastic job with the landscaping, which helps define seats, bicycle parking, paths, crossings, and helps people find entrances and platforms. So I'm now at the Dundas stop, or is it Dundas, or even Dundas? I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. Anyway, quite a lot has changed here. I can see the platforms, so let's take a look. On the south side of the station, the platforms are now in place, with their sloped endings for step-free access and there is landscaping between the active transport path and the tram tracks, as you can see here. This is the crossing that leads to the steps that go to Kissing Point Road. You can also see the bicycle hoops and the first brick planter. This path comes from Dudley Street, which is behind me, and provides access to the southbound platform and the car parks on either side. This is how it looked three months earlier. 
the planters were just starting to be built along with the paths and car park. And the platforms, well they were very much a work in progress at this time. This is the second planter with the original platform building behind it. You can also see an overhead wire pole and cantilever and parts of the northbound platform. And here is the third planter coming into view on the right. Now just north of the Dundas stop and pedestrians can now walk along the entire length of Leamington Road as this new underpass has now been opened. The original underpass carried a single track so this new wider one now carries two tram tracks and the active transport path. This is strange, it's definitely not 4.436 kilometres long or wide. Perhaps that's the distance from Carlingford. So I'm now at the Tilopia stop and unlike Radomir and Dundas, I can't see very much that's changed here at all really. So um, what I'll probably have to do is look at my other footage from three months ago and play a bit of spot the difference. I couldn't spot any differences. The tracks, platforms and overhead wires have been looking like this for several months now. I'm sure the platforms will get canopies and I reckon this is a separate contract as no platforms at any of the stops have progressed beyond this stage as yet. I've spotted something. These signs have appeared since I was last here. To see more of the Tilopia stop, do check out my previous Parramatta Light Rail Part 2 update video. There's a link in the description. While the Parramatta Light Rail is being built, there is a replacement bus service on the old Carlingford line, it's 535. And uh, it's totally empty, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, it's quite hilly up to Carlingford, so this is going to save my feet a little bit. The 535 bus runs every 20 minutes in the off-peak. It starts in Parramatta and stops close to the Camellia, Rydalmere, Dundas and Tilopia stops only, and then terminates at Carlingford. So now at the Carlingford stop, which is the northern terminus for the Parramatta light rail, doesn't look like much has changed here either. I was hoping that some of this fencing might have come down so I can get a closer look, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Here is a quick reminder of the Carlingford stop and approach. The line goes single track for a very short section that goes under the Pennant Hills road bridge, and then returns to two tracks for the Carlingford platforms. Just like at Tilopia, nothing has changed here. It looks like the next job will be to install the platform canopies, and then the next train displays an Opal machine. Okay, so I'm in the Carlingford area at the moment and I've just bumped into Andy. Hi Andy, how are you doing? Good. So Andy's a local here. Are you missing the rail line at the moment? Yeah, mate, I am actually. Um, I used to travel on it um, from, from here to um, Camellia. And so you'll use it to get to Parramatta, I guess? Yes, I will, yep. Good. Do you think we'll go to Westmead on it as well? Yes, mate. Absolutely. If you need yeah. to go to hospital, it'll be perfect for that. It would be, yeah. That's good. Thank you, Andy. No worries. Cheers. For more footage on the Carlingford stop, and the single track section just before it, do check out my previous Parramatta light rail update video. There's a link in the description below. So in this video and also in part one, you've seen the new platforms, you've obviously seen the track, and you've seen, particularly on this section, overhead wires. So there's one thing that's missing. What is it? One essential thing that is needed, especially on this section up to Carlingford, so from Camellia to Carlingford, that is needed for this whole thing to work. Let me know what it is in the comments below. So that's the end of this Parramatta Light Rail update video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do give this video a like, give it a thumbs up. Do leave a comment or question below and I'll do my best to answer any questions. If you haven't already subscribed to the Transport Vlog YouTube channel, then please do. And also consider supporting me on Patreon. There's a link in the description below. There's lots of cool perks, including early access to videos and also live Q&A Zoom chats with me at certain levels. So do check that out. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.